tonight. Um, this is our first talk of the 2022 spring season, I think. So thank y'all for coming out. I know it's cold, but uh, so I'd like to, oh, first of all, my name is Yvonne Garcia. I'm the owner of the gallery, so <laughs> thank you. Uh, but I really like to thank uh, Ronald and Pete for being here tonight so they could talk a little bit about uh, Ronald's show. Um, and just some background, so Ronald uh, is a self-taught self multidisciplinary artist. Um, he, you're based, I say you're based here, but you're really from Bay City. Well, I'm originally from Houston, but... Oh, uh, okay. you're kind of, we're just yeah. going to call you here. You're, you're yeah. here. Okay, um, and he actually has an outdoor installation at Arkley Houston at the moment, so if you haven't checked it out yet, go and check it out. Um, and then we have Peter John, who's going to be kind of doing the Q&A with Ronald. Um, he is the uh, curator of programs at the Orange Show, um, and he also used to be the um, program coordinator for the core program at Grisel. So that, and he also wrote a fantastic book called Cool Vision about the Houston art community. The, 72, what, 72 to 85? 72 to 85, so all the incidents in the book are about to celebrate their 50th anniversary, all in sequence. All right, so <laughs> there you go, but I'm gonna hand it over to Ronald, and he's gonna talk about the Broadway people from understand. Everybody else, we take our math up. Thanks, Yvonne. It's yeah. so nice to be here at Tex Epstein Gallery. So I was just saying, I come in, I've, I've been in here a lot, and I always like to look in there and expect to see Jerry back there. And it's just uh, it's such a special place, and uh, I think it's so great that you're part of the roster here. I mean, I feel like uh, you know they really they made a smart choice bringing you into the into the team here. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've been uh, thinking about Ron's work a lot lately. Uh, we were in here talking about all this stuff yesterday. Uh, we were talking about your work at, at uh, over at ALH and then the work that is going to be coming together pretty soon for the Orange Show. Yes. And uh, it's quite a number of different facets along the way. Yeah. So uh, a lot of things that we can talk about. But I guess maybe a good place to start is I'm interested in self-trained artists. I don't know, especially, but like, I like the authenticity of somebody who really comes up with their own complete artistic experience. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about uh, your process of discovery, realizing that you were a creative person with a, a future in this in this record. Uh, well, I didn't really move to Houston to make art. I came here to uh, make documentaries, but. Uh, while I was making documentaries, I was making art at the same time. Uh, hmm. I don't know how to really answer that question. Uh, I've always been creative, you know. At some point, I just kind of realized that what I was doing uh, creatively was actually kind of like self-help. Uh, and the more that I actually worked on things, uh, the more I felt like myself. Uh, and so what I started making uh, started being like representations or like you know, the dialogue that I was having with myself that I could make tangible. Uh, and so I just kind of invested more and more time into that. Yeah. And, what, and so some of this large scale installation work, what were some of the early instances of that where you were really getting your approach to it? Uh, so the first time. Uh, so, uh, well, I'm not big right now how it started. So I wasn't really interested in streaming. I was actually painting a mural in a friend's house that was scheduled to be torn down. Uh, and uh, I saw, I, I met someone, uh, his name was, it's funny that I forget his name right now. Uh, but anyway, uh, a friend of mine brought someone by and uh, he was working in yard and I saw him outside, like on the patio, just kind of looking up like blankly at, uh, at the, just at the ceiling. And I went back inside to work on the mural that I was working on and when I came back outside, he was making all these connections. And, you know, it did this, made this like rotation more time and it was gone and there was this gold, this is not gold, but this colorful web. Uh, but, you know, there was one night that I went outside and I kind of said, well, I'm gonna give it the time of day and I started looking at just kind of the anchor points. Yeah. Uh, and I noticed that uh, he didn't bring anything but the string. But and I noticed that because everything that he used as an anchor point was an old nail that was already painted over and rusted. Uh, so, uh, 
felt really bad and I wanted to I wanted to apologize in a way that like I feel like only a creative could apologize, right? Uh, so I was like, well, I don't want to do the same thing that he's doing. I want to join a conversation and say that I can see what he's doing and not just mimic it, but to like add something to the conversation. So like that night I tried to uh, enlist a friend to help me create something that would be that, uh, but it wouldn't, it still didn't feel the same. You know, uh, it was just a pyramid that came off the ceiling down to like the tip and a piece of string that came off to a bird cage. Uh, but I didn't feel good about it, so I asked a friend, that's the same friend uh, who owned the place, or was staying there, if I could uh, use a different room. And in that room, I just spent the next like two months uh, trying to figure out how to make something that was three-dimensional. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, uh, so sometimes these are in a gallery setting, but like oftentimes they're just out there in the world sometimes a uh, commission, but sometimes kind of unsanctioned intervention out there in the public. Yeah, uh, so, I don't know. It got to, I, got, I got to a point where I was asking a lot of people for like spaces to do like artwork, uh, and I wasn't really getting anything, any feedback or any like, any, nothing was becoming available, right? So, and then a lot of things were, you know, we had to apply for or be, you know, asked to, uh, asked to participate in. Uh, and I just saw these opportunities just outside where I could just use a screen space to like, you know, put my feelings or whatever I was going through out in the open. Uh, and, you know, I just like that. I find Houston is like especially uh, permeable uh, for that kind of stuff, uh, the social sphere. Yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of places that are available for like public art that aren't being utilized, right? Uh, and I just like, Finding them and putting stuff there, and not having to wait for someone to like validate that the community yeah. could use it, or that it would have an impact. Yeah. Now, obviously, like this stuff is like extremely delicate. We were talking about this yesterday, but uh, and you know, very vulnerable. Like to me, it seems like very vulnerable artwork. Uh, but people don't mess with it. No, uh, I think when you put something in a place that folks may not have seen before, they, I won't say they tend to respect it, but they kind of look at it like it's, an, it's like a foreign object, right? Um, I don't know, I, it's always like a, it's a risk, right? The first risk is like showing up and hoping that the cops don't get called, right? Uh, and then like, uh, hoping that you then like that becomes like a thing where like, maybe the weather conditions will tear it down, but uh, when I'm out there and I'm having a conversation with the people that are uh, passers by or the people that are part of the community, like no one's ever, I mean, there's been like one person that was like, people got across to the, 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 the median right here, but like there's really, that, there's really just that one person and then also there's another guy that was like, how are they going to mow the yard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, so that's part of this is like, you know, when I think about it, like, you know, there's web of connections. But also, like there's boundary being created too, so these th things kind of go in two different directions in a way. Yeah, uh, so we, uh, the way I look at them is, uh, I like them being as arid as they are because they allow you to see like the entire space they occupy, right? Like the before, the, the before, middle, and after of the space they occupy. But you also see that like there is like a obstruction that doesn't allow you to navigate the same way, so you have to like move uh, and engage the space differently. And I like to utilize spaces that, you know, like if you were to walk in, you would have to like go straight back, straight back. But if I wanted, if I, would, if I was thinking about this, not in that people have to navigate the space, like I would put something right here so you couldn't have a direct line. Yeah. So it's just like investigation of the space, but also making the space like viewable. Yeah. Uh, well, do you want to talk about this, this piece in particular that is kind of like, you know, what all this work is sort of centered around? Sure. Uh, so this piece is titled Souls of Black Folks. Uh, it's titled after uh, the W.E.B. Du Bois uh, book that I read when I was uh, locked up. Uh, so within it, uh, if you were to pee, peer down into the actual, is it podium or pedestal? Pedestal. Yes. <laughs> if you were to, yeah, if you were actually peer down into it, uh, that, so the the installation itself is just about uh, an individual's path as they're as they're projecting it outward, like just from being a person that's existing. 
So the idea is you look inside and you see all these uh, suspended uh, acrylic sheets that are being navigated by this gold, uh, gold embroidery floss. And the idea is that uh, when you're seeing an individual, you're like, when you bring the conversation is what you see. But there's a whole other conversation that's taking place. So this work is from a series of black and two of monolith. So the idea is that like this black identity is, uh, I guess the easiest way to say is like if if you were to just look at the stereotypes that are placed on like black bodies, then that's what this monolith would be. But if you were to look inside, you would see that there's all this other dialogue that's taking place that. Uh, happens uh, in conversation with those things, uh, and then looking up at these uh, small lots, the idea of these is to essentially uh, point to individuals that have existed, essentially making the sheets and the individuals that work through those obstacles present within the work. So this web comes out, uh, and within it are all these individuals that are resting in uh, the essence of their soul. and. Those that's made present by the hearts that they sit in, represented like these right here. So the idea is, while you're walking up to it, if you're standing from right here, you're seeing this individual, this like this box, this individual, this, this right here. But as you're standing there, there's this wealth of information, this knowledge, this uh, path that has been paved for them to just be standing there. Uh, and these are all individuals that have broken through barriers uh, in, order, in, in order for them to just be present. Uh, all the diamonds that are here are different colors, and uh, I was saying that diamonds don't have color, they're clear. Uh, so they only reflect, uh, re reflect, and re re reflect and refract light, uh, and uh, the light of the surfaces uh, and the environments of the place within. So each of these individuals have lived lives in different circumstances, but are all part of the same web network of individuals uh, that have made the point of this one person who's standing in their presence or in someone's presence. So the idea is that, you know, everyone is walking around with this wealth of understanding and knowledge that, uh, that people have given them over time, just through lineage and just through their own personal experiences. Uh, and the idea is that, you know, we hold that higher uh, and, but, I guess I'll go into these pieces. So if these individuals are the ones, if these individuals that have these lots of land that are resting in uh, the essence that is, are their souls, uh, then these are the individuals that have contributed to the story that in, the same, in the same way, but their stories aren't, uh, they don't echo through time the same way. Like if you're thinking about like Black History Month, you know, you could name like a handful of people that they talk about every single year. But then there's all these other individuals that played a part and played a role in just like black creativity, black existence, just black excellence, like any, any kind, just existing. Like, so uh, their contributions aren't vocalized as loudly because parts of their stories are, have been removed from the context of the great conversation. So they float out, uh, still part of the web, but not as secure as individuals who can call by name in the proper context of the <coughs> thing that they've achieved. And I guess, yeah, so if this one's talk, if this one's talking about the past that led you to a place, uh, this one would be speaking about a uh, future that you can arrive at. So using the same body, uh, but within it, you know, if the ceilings that are suspended in there have been, you know, taken down and placed in here, uh, but within this new construct, this, uh, Suspended, these suspended sheets still exist, so the construct and everything that these individuals went through may still be present in the future, but the gold line representative of a, a life path uh, never, never has to engage them because the information that's been passed down from generation to generation, uh, uh, community to community, has made it to where even though they exist, you don't have to navigate them and engage them. Yeah. Uh, and we were talking about yesterday, like this is more like the, the, the gold path there. This is not really like a frozen in time representation of something, but really more like a guide or a suggestion. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, so it's, uh, I, I titled it The Message uh, from the Future because I thought about it like, uh, 
Okay, so there was this instance where I was writing in the car with some folks and they were speaking about how um, the townhomes have started, and uh, condos have started uh, springing up, like just random places with them, like uh, Third Ward, and, like uh, Eastwood, Second Ward, and Fifth Ward. Um, and these individuals lived in like the Heights and they were speaking about how they were able to stop that from happening there, right? But that information never made it to these other communities, so like they're still having to go through the same thing, right? So that's what this piece is about, essentially saying like, you know, if the information's out there that these things are things that you can navigate and don't have to engage, but there's someone or there's a group of individuals or individuals that haven't made that information privy to everyone. Yeah. So then we have, like, throughout the rest of the show, we have more of these kind of disconnected figures. Yes. And I, like, I feel like with the with the bird cages, with this sequence of three, you can kind of talk more about these. Yeah. And that's, that's their function. Yeah. So if these are uh, these parts that are hanging are uh, individuals that who have been connected and put in context with the. What, what they've done, what they've accomplished in life, what they've achieved that has moved uh, the conversation of individuals forward. Uh, like these are uh, representations of like what happens when that when that when that information is locked away for generations, right? Where uh, so you have like an older and older group here stuck within the same construct because the information about how we can get to another place is left and stuck here, and the same with this one, right? But with this one over here, you can see, well, the idea with this one is that, you know, through generation, uh, the old generations pass this information from generation to generation until, like, someone from a younger generation is able to put it all together to remove them from the context, or remove, remove them from uh, this confined area and add them to the conversation with, and put them in proper context so they can move into the afterlife being fully appreciated. So, um, and similar with these these uh, vessels here, some are some are contained, and yes. some some are being let out. Yes. So the idea is that you know, in order in order for us to see the world as it is, we have to be able to place everything in its proper context, right? To say that like this is this individual and this is what they accomplished, and this is how it and this is how it affects the whole of not just the community but the world, right? Uh, so that way we can move forward without having to go through the same instructions, right? Yeah. And, uh, and the portrait in the back. Yeah, so the portrait in the back is life defined by a construct. And that piece uh, is essentially me saying that uh, I want to talk about uh, how hard it is to move around in this construct that I'm in. Uh, I've, uh, sorry, I've used the gold one, the gold paint, to essentially sim to symbolize that I feel like I'm on like a, a path that I'm not choosing, like a chosen path. Uh, but even while I'm on this path, there are all these uh, barriers that are keeping me from moving freely uh, to exit the construct, right? But uh, upon first, uh, upon closer inspection, you can see that. Uh, on some of these sheets, they've been pierced like one or two times. So uh, it's to say that someone has been there before and has made it through that, but the impact on the whole, on the scale of the whole thing is very, very minuscule, right? You can possibly find the hole that they've created, but you're most likely to be stuck behind the surface, right? In your work, everything means something. It's highly symbolic work. I mean, nothing is. Uh... A stray uh, line or uh, extra detail. Well, I well, honestly, I think I feel, I feel that that is almost all the way true. But I mean, a lot of it is things that happen in the process, right? It's not that I say I want to be able to articulate this one thing that uh, like in this work or whatever it may be. Like, I start out thinking about. Um, this very personal things and try to figure out how I can uh, do something like, I think it's like a, maybe a junior high where you compare and contrast things uh, and try to figure out how to place myself in conversation that isn't directly related to what I'm going through so that way I can figure out how I can solve for what I'm dealing with by solving for this other thing at the same time. 
And so I mean, like a lot of things get included just because of like adding different variables to try to stop or whatever it may be. I'd be going through that change that. Well, um, do y'all wanna ask any, any questions? Yep. Um, I was wondering about like the process, in particular the larger interior installations. Like, how do you go about that? How do you approach it? How do you make the decisions? Uh, well, with the larger stuff indoors, it really is kind of, you know, what is, like, what is the gallery or the space going to let me do, right? Can I, like, drill holes in the floor, right? Can I, like, make it really hard for people to navigate this space, right? Uh, but for this, I was kind of like, I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, I sometimes walk to a place knowing what I want to create, but I can't say that it'll look a certain way. I can only like relay that like, this is what I'm feeling this would might, this might look like, or these are the elements that will be involved, right? So with this, I knew that people had to be able to walk in, uh, but I knew I wanted uh, things to hang from it, and also knew that like I wanted people to feel like they couldn't escape it once they got inside. <laughs> I think I like, that's what I like about your work the most, it's like, uh, as people say, it's like super symbolic. There's so much thought that goes into that. But then when you get to see your true artisan, right? Like your true intuitiveness comes out with you getting to plan where it goes. Like, like that's where you get to be the true artist. Like, yeah. like as a painter, like I get to, like that's where my intuitive com comes out whenever I get to like do paint brushes on the paper, and it's the same thing with you when you're strained yeah. in midair, you know? Yeah. Like, you're you're using it as a paint, and, and it's like, you're, and that's where, and that's where, like, it's a great balance. Like, great art has a great balance of sim symbolic, and then the intuitive, intuitiveness and confidence yeah. of the artist, you know? Yeah. And that's why your work is so great, because it, like, you found that balance, you know? And that's where, like, that's why you're able to present it in such this, like, articulate way, but it still looks free. That's why people are puzzled, right? They're like, wait, it it comes from just his brain? Like he doesn't like draw it out, which sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But the fact that you don't plan this strategic thing out is like it baffles people. Yeah. And like that's what makes people like be more curious about art, right? Like it's always like you know, like I like people whenever people are like this with the art. If you can make people some someone do that with your work, yeah. that's a great piece. You know, and people do that with your work so much. Yeah, well, so it's like it's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I feel like people kind of have to do that because you know you don't see the dimensionality, so you move around it, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I started making the small works because it was really hard for me to tell people what I did in like large form, right? And then also try to show photos of like things I made and be like. This looks like a bunch of lines in a room, right? Or a bunch of lines between trees. Uh, but, you know, yeah. Well, you're, you're drawing in three dimensions, basically. I mean, to me, this is like as much a drawing as it is a sculpture. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I think, uh, like, making these sculptures is really, like, my favorite thing, right? Because, <laughs> um, you get to be I, free. Yeah, right. I mean, like as, as much as the in, as much as the environment and the space will allow me to, right? Like, I don't have to. Uh, like, I don't have to think about it for like at least like eight hours when I'm just my first start and just doing it, and then you know maybe four or five hours in, like it starts to look like something, and then I'm like, all right, well, like I'm gonna try to make this into a shape. Uh, but it wasn't always like that. I remember when I changed the way I started making things, right? It was right after uh, the show that uh, Kelly Montana put on, uh, that was a, a group show that she did at uh, Fox 13, uh, uh, Shaped by abstract, uh, Abstraction. At that time, I was doing like a lot of connections, and then I would start making uh, like secondary connections, and then, you know, third and fourth until it was done. But then I would start cutting away at it, right, to like give the illusion that it was made this way. Uh, and so like, um, well, well, the title of the show like kind of gave away what I was doing. And then I didn't like that someone could just point to what I was doing and say, this is what it is. So I just started being more like intentional with what I was doing. So when I went to a place, it's like, nothing's going to get cut. Everything is going to be a part of it. And I'm going to have to be, I just have to be okay with what it turns out to be. And it's usually something I want to see. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Other questions from y'all? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a couple. Uh, these uh, these little plots of the trees are they uh, like model railroad uh, trees? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, so they were actually made for some man. They were made for like a modeling, but so the trees come in like there's they come in like really bulky trees. But what I started doing is like I was doing these. Uh, I was doing a series using the trees, but I was using too much trees, so I started just using uh, wire cutters and breaking it apart and just making smaller, smaller ones. I so like, my yeah. other question is totally unrelated to that, but I've seen some of the outdoor ones, and, and the problem, not the problem, but what's different than say this, this is really highly visible because it's black thread and a white wall. The outdoor ones are not. Have you ever had someone just walk into it? Uh, okay, so the very first one, the very first one I did in that house, like, and, you know, like I was saying, it took like two months to figure out how to make that. You know, the, the night of the opening, somebody got drunk and walked right into it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so like, but I mean, like, when when you're driving by it, they're really hard to see, right? But when you're like right there, you can see it, right? So the idea is. And in a lot of ways, the idea is to change the environment just so much to where like you can notice something's different, but you can't really pinpoint it into your right mind, right? Um, and then also like, man, I don't want to like have to keep dealing with the cops, so like, right. <laughs> like it has to be like, I pick a location where it's like highly visible if you if you're looking for it uh, or if your eyes catch it, but like. Uh, I like that you really can't see it. And then anyway, outside, like, there's so many different colors, like, outside, right. that, like, you really can't focus on anything. So I try to use, like, yellows and color, yellows, col colors that are closer to white that are a little more reflective. Right. So that way people can see it, like, stand out in some areas, but then I'll use a lot of greens and blues that, like, just make it kind of disappear at the same time. And now you're using more light than these. So oh, sure. yeah, so the idea, I mean, like, I've been wanting to use light in a sculpture for maybe two years now, uh, but just never really got the uh, opportunity to do so. But now it's kind of like, all right, well, I have these shows, I'm going to take the risk, right? So that's all it really is, is uh, finally finding myself in a position where I can take the risk of like failing, right? And well, everything is a risk of failing, but like with light, that means I have to learn something. Uh, with strings, it's like I kind of understand the uh, materiality of it, like how what I can make it do, uh, what I can make other things do, that, uh, uh, like in it, well, what I can suspend from it, like what you can actually do, just dexterity of it, all those other things. But with light, like I don't know how I, how much I can bend it. I don't know how I can keep it from like getting destroyed outside. All these other things. So it's like, yeah. Well, it's a, a practice is obviously growing and expanding. Yeah, because, uh, man, I don't want to just be doing, uh, I don't want someone to just be able to like say, this is what I do. Uh, and I think that's why I try uh, so many different things, because I don't like the idea of being like, oh, I'm a fiber artist, but like, I'm also like, yes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so my question, and I think relates well to this, is just how you are able to, especially early on with the strings, this brand new medium, how do you overcome the, the need to self-edit, like this perfectionistic, almost like overlooker? Because it sounds like you just are able to kind of ride the wave and let it come out. Was that difficult at first to prevent yourself from editing at every step and let yourself just get into flow? Uh, when I was working on, uh, so that mural that I was working on, uh, I spoke to my friend Jaja, -Ja, who was working on, like, I mean, he's working on, I think, two different things in that same house. Uh, and I was working on, I was penciling in this uh, self-portrait, and I remember, like, just coming, like, hitting a wall and asking him, like, like, how do you just do it? Because he would just show up and just start. Uh, and asked him how, how you just do it, and he was like, "Well, I just don't pull my hand no." So that's kind of the approach that I take with this: is just, you know, I start and like I just keep going until like it gets a shape, and it's, I don't know. I, there's times where I walk away from it feeling like, man, I could have like did another line, or I could do this, but like at the same time, like 
I have to be, I have to understand that like I can't keep adding to it, right? Uh, there's some times where it'll tell you what you're, when you're doing too much, right? Like if I'm putting too much tension over here and something over there breaks, like we're all right, like I need to slow down and actually look at what I'm doing and maybe I'm already done. Yeah. As you're doing it, yeah. you're getting feedback. From yeah. yeah, yeah. So the, the sculpture itself tells me what's possible, right? Like, uh, like creating like the arts and the facts. Like there's only so much I can do in order to uh, to make that happen. If there was too much tension, then it wouldn't happen. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions? Another question. Um, you mentioned like the materiality of the string and how you kind of figured out kind of the limits of what you can do with it. So how with like the hearts and like the individuals and the bird cages, how do you, how do you get the string to support itself, the structure to hold? Like are you adding anything to it, like glue or oh so I put magic spells on them and no. Uh, so <laughs> Uh, we tried. So, <laughs> like, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so, so, what it, um, so that shape is actually a shape that I created while I was working on the installation. Um, uh, well, one of the uh, uh, commission works from uh, the Houston Museum of African American Culture. Uh, I wanted, they did the same thing. I worked on our installation outside and it rained for like four days straight. And it first time to knock the whole thing down. Uh, but I'd already like made up my mind that I didn't really like what I was working on. So it was like so it was like I needed it to like go away so I could start another one. So I went just across the highway uh, and started another one and I was just like, you know, I really want to try something different, right? I want to take a risk because like they're trusting me to take this risk, right? So uh, I was like, well, what if I made this connection and then I just followed through just making a similar connection. Uh, and ultimately, like, what was created was this heart, and it was like a, a diamond. And it's funny because, like, I tried to make, like, a heart before, and it was trash. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I forgot what I was talking about. And then, well, and this one was part of a, uh, yes. part of an installation. Yes, oh, no, let me finish that, I didn't answer your question. So, uh, with these, like, I've been making them in, uh, I've make, I make the small sculptures in, uh, these like display cases that are for like baseballs or soft, softballs, whatever. Uh, and I use uh, fabric stiffener uh, to like, I just paint them. Once I create them, I paint them with fabric stiffener and I either let them like harden. And if I don't feel like waiting, I'll just put it in the microwave. Uh, I have to do that here. <laughs> uh, I'll, put, I'll put them in the microwave and I'll take them out and just cut them out. And they just keep the shape. But, you know, uh, they, it only works up to a certain like size because the weight of it will like it just can't handle it. Like I made some that were, you know, like this big, and well, they're like this big, but you know, like I hung them and they just went to trash. Yeah. But you use wire sometimes, but like you're you are mostly relying on the, the string and the fabric and the, the tension. Of yeah, yeah, so like all of it is like just trying to use tension to make a thing a thing. Yeah. So and you don't want you don't want to support you want the support to come from that tension. Yeah, yeah. So, oh no, no, no. So the idea is to build it and then suspend it in like as it was so that I can remove it from that. Because you know, this for me, the next step from making this big thing small was to show people that it was something like show it like in this three-dimensional way. And the next step would be to remove it from the case itself and just to have it like freestanding. Yeah. Other questions? Anything else you want to say? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. No. Uh, people should go see your work at Arlene Houston. Yeah, yeah. So the show at Arlene Houston, I think, is really awesome. It's the first uh, time that I've used uh, a light element in a large work outside. Uh, it's actually the first time that I've used uh, suspended sheets outside. Uh, it's in the same. It's in the same vein as this piece here with the suspended suspended sheets. Like when I first started making these works, the idea was to use the gold, uh, the gold embroidery cloth as a stand-in for what would be a light element. Uh, and now, you know, so I've been working on these types of sculptures using that uh, 
using this in the sheets and uh, in gold border plots for two years now, and now I'm at the point of substituting that gold for an actual light, and that piece is, you know, uh, essentially just a thank you for for folks that uh, helped me when I was uh, building pretty city. And we've got some coming up at the Warner Show pretty soon. Yes, yeah. yeah, so the show, uh, the exhibition at the Warner Show is all light, uh, not like suspended sheets or any other thing incorporated. Uh, so I'll be using uh, L wire to create uh, an installation that is uh, representative of like, you know, the inspiration that you put out into the world and how it multiplies just by existing and making it available. Uh, it's titled uh, A Spark That Spirals Out. Uh, because I look at it like, you know, some, just like this, you know, someone has to exist and someone has to go through uh, something uh, or make something visible and available for another person for that idea to move into the future. So uh, I look at it like just creating these nexus points with a uh, LOI uh, that people navigate. Yeah. But and pretty, something pretty new for you in this yeah. case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is uh, going to be me. Yeah. yeah, it's just. There you go. <laughs> yeah. He's actually using like, uh, and yeah, so I'm kind of tripping out on that. Well, people, people can come on uh, March 13th is when we'll have to open for the show. And it's going to be free, and it's a Sunday afternoon, and hopefully the weather's going to be good for us. And besides Ronald in the show, Jonathan Paul Jackson's in the show, and uh, Emily Sloan, and the Young Cloud, and Gabriel Martinez, and uh, who am I forgetting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 So I uh, hope people will be able to join us for that. And yeah. Yeah. what else you want to say about this? Or anything else? Um, you know, with just about anything that I create, you know, I try to I try to use it as therapy. Not so much like you know I need to have something that I really need to work out of or have something on mind that I want to work out. But you know, I feel like. Whenever I'm working on any of these pieces, it just gives me my clarity of thought and allows me to look at things in like more than one dimension, right? So it's like, allows me to look at it, uh, I guess, from a fourth dimension. So all this stuff is to say that I have feelings, <laughs> I have feelings and I feel a way about a thing, uh, but I know that if I were to remove just my, if I were to remove uh, certain biases that a person may have, or just give like the straight, like, a straight form to say that like an individual walking towards you uh, has, has been led down this path by a series of things uh, and that all these individuals that are that uh, that they know and can reference have allowed them to arrive so I mean that's something that anyone can say right uh, so the idea for all this work is to be able to um, kind of break down a barrier for someone to see that you know everyone else is like in the same game the same thing with the piece at Hartley and the same thing with the piece of one show. Uh, all the work is trying to push the same narrative that like through conversation, through the sharing of dialogue, through the sharing of inspiration, we all move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. Maybe that, that might be the perfect place to leave it right there. Y'all what do y'all think? Good enough? All right. Yeah. Thank you.